What's up, everybody? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is Giacomo Marchese. I'm one of the coaches here at Vegan Proteins. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to hit your protein without going over on carbs and fats. The most obvious thing to focus on, first off, is protein-dense sources. It's important, though, to understand these days that it's not so obvious what is considered protein-dense and what is not protein-dense because there are all kinds of plant-based meats out there that you can buy, and some of them you would think are high in protein compared to how much carbs and fats in them, but they're not. Your safest bets are to focus on beefless grounds and chicken strips when you're going store-bought because they tend to have between somewhere between zero to five grams of carbs and or fats or less for like 20 to 30 grams of protein, which is pretty good, right? The other good sources are tofu, tempeh, and seitan. They're heavy hitters, they're easy to source, they're healthy, they're not heavily processed or anything like that. And they're really easy to work with. They're like staples when it comes to protein and sources. So at the bottom of the pyramid, step one, the very first thing you do, focus on proteins and sources that are not high in carbs and fats. Also know that the other plant-based meats that you find out there that are store-bought may have upwards of five, 10, 15, 20 plus grams of fat and or carbs for like 20, 30 grams of protein. But because it is either chicken or beef or like whatever, or burger or hot dog, you think it's gonna be high in protein because it's plant meat, right? So meat, protein, not so much. So Again, your safest two bets are beefless grounds and chicken strips in any brand. And I know that Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat have all kinds of really tasty stuff, but unfortunately that stuff is just a little bit higher in fat. So is stuff like sausage, for example. Most sausages are not good to go. So that's step one. Find your most protein-dense sources. Know the difference between protein-dense sources that are lower in carbs and fats versus the ones that are higher in carbs and fats. The next thing to do is to focus on protein-rich snacks. Not necessarily protein-dense stuff, but snacks that are rich in protein. Stuff like edamame, for example, or vegan jerky, or bars. Things that, again, are protein-rich, not necessarily protein-dense. This will help round out your day and make sure that you're getting your protein and the carbs and the fats are not creeping up too much. This is where it can get a little fun and you can get a little creative and you have control over what you eat and how you do things by making your own stuff. You can pick up things to use to bake with or to cook with to make your own vegan meats or to make your own baked goods, like your own chicken patties, your own protein bars and stuff like that. And you can do this in a real simple way by getting stuff like vital wheat gluten flour or rice protein powder and making things. We have all kinds of recipes over here. If you haven't looked at the recipe playlist on this YouTube channel yet, you're missing out. We have high protein recipes. You can make your own breads, you can make your own meats, you can make your own bars, all kinds of things. And that's actually a lot of fun to do stuff like that. The next thing that you can think about now that you have a whole bunch of protein rich sources and stuff that isn't protein dense, but is protein rich, right? You have all that. The next thing you can do is to focus on building the base of your meal plan around stuff that isn't really protein rich, but has some protein in it. Stuff like dark green leafy vegetables, nutritional yeast, which you can make cheesy sauces out of, or you can sprinkle on top of your vegetables. Incorporating things like beans, chickpeas, other stuff like that, where the protein will add up, but I don't consider those protein sources. They're just looking for stuff that has protein in it. If you're getting store-bought bread, the low-carb bread tends to have a little more protein, stuff like that. Just look for stuff that has protein in it, but isn't protein rich, and the protein will come up. Finally, this is something else to, that people get hung up on. Don't think about trying to hit your carbs, fats, and protein exactly to the letter. When people start to track like that, I get it. You want to nail all of your macros, and there's this fear of like eating too much for the day, like going over calories, blah, blah, blah. But as long as you're hitting your protein goal for the day and you're getting in a minimal amount of fat, which is somewhere between 30, but preferably 35, 45 grams of fat, as long as you're getting in that much fat, even if your fat macros are higher for the day, you can take some of your fat and have more carbs. So in other words, 
You can trade your carbohydrates and fats for one another just to hit your macros for the day as long as you're nailing your protein for the day. Don't get hung up on carbs, fats, and protein and trying to hit them all exactly because one of two things tends to happen. You either wind up going over or under on calories or you wind up not hitting your protein or you just wind up stressing about it all way more than you should. As long as you're getting in enough fat, it doesn't matter how you do in terms of nailing your carbs and fats. You can always trade fat for carbs and vice versa. So let's just go over everything here. That way you have it all top of mind and you know what to do. Proteins and sources first, make sure they really are proteins and sources, the type of stuff that has fewer than five grams of carbs, fewer than five grams of fat, like 20, 30 grams of protein. Chicken strips, beefless grounds, tofu, tempeh, and seitan. Seitan, yes, tofu and tempeh, not so much, but they still are really good sources of protein. They're satiating. I still do put them in this bracket. The other stuff where the fat and the carbs really creep up, five, 10, 15, 20 grams of fat, and possible foods, beyond meat products, burgers, hot dogs, chicken patties as opposed to chicken strips, et cetera, et cetera. All that stuff, carbs and fats will add up fast. You think they're protein dense sources, but they're not so much, not as much as you think. Get snacks that are proteiny. Focus on building a base around foods that aren't protein rich, but you can get protein in. And then finally, don't get hung up on your carbs and your fats and try and nail them to the gram. Focus on getting your protein and you can trade carbs for fats and vice versa. And that should take the stress out of it as long as you're getting in enough fat to support your body and your health, which is typically somewhere between 30 to 45 grams. But I think on the upper end of that is going to be better. Anyways, I hope this information helps you. Let me know if you have any questions and feedback and comments, any anything, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let us know what you want us to talk about. We talk about this stuff all the time. We put these videos out here for you. Once again, it's Jacqueline Marquesi, one of the coaches here at Vegan Proteins, and we'll come at you on the next video.